My dear Mr. Bennet, said his lady to him one day, have you heard? Netherfield Park is let at last. Mr. Bennet replied that he had not. But it is, replied she, for Mrs. Long has just been here and she told me all about it. Mr. Bennet made no answer. Uh, do you not even want to know who has taken it? cried his wife impatiently. You want to tell me, and I have no objection to hearing it. This was invitation enough. Why, my dear, you must know, Mrs. Long says that Netherfield is taken by a young man of large fortune for the north of England, that he came down on Monday in a chaise and four to see the place, and he was so much delighted with it that he agreed with Mr. Morris immediately that he is to take possession before Michaelmas, and some of his servants are to be in the house by the end of next week. What is his name? Bingley. Is he married or single? Oh, single, my dear, to be sure. A young man of large fortune, some four or five thousand a year. Oh, you think what a fine thing for our girls. How so? How can it affect them? My dear Mr. Bennet, replied his wife, how can he be so tiresome? You must know I am thinking of his marrying one of them. Is that his design in settling him? It, what, design? Nonsense. How could you talk so? It is very likely that he may fall in love with one of them, and therefore you must visit him as soon as they come. Oh, I see no occasion for that. You and the girls may go, or you may send them by themselves, which perhaps will be still better. For as you are as handsome as any of them, Mr Bingley might like you the best of the party. You flatter me, my dear. I have had my share of beauty, but I do not claim to be anything extraordinary now. When a woman has five grown-up daughters, she ought to give over thinking of her own beauty. In such cases... A woman has not often much beauty to think of. But, my dear, you must indeed go and see Mr Bingley when he comes into the neighbourhood. It is more than I engage for, I assure you. But consider your daughters. I may think what an establishment it would be for one of them. Sir William and Lady Lucas are going merely on that account. For, as you know, in general, they visit no newcomers. Indeed, you must go, for it will be impossible for us to visit him if you do not. You are overscrupulous, surely. I dare say Mr Bingley will be very glad to see you, and I, I will send a few lines by you to assure him of my hearty consent to his marrying whichever he chooses of the girls. Though I must put it, a good word for my little Lizzie. Uh, no, I desire you'll do no such thing. Lizzie is not a bit better than the others. Indeed, I am sure she's not half so handsome as Jane, nor half so good-humoured as Lydia, and yet you're always giving her the preference. Well, they have none of them much to recommend them replied he. They are all silly and ignorant, like other girls. But Lizzie has something more of quickness than her sisters. Mr Bennet, how can you abuse your own children in such a way? You take delight in vexing me. You have no compassion on my poor nerves. You mistake me, my dear. I have a high respect for your nerves. They are my old friends. I have heard you mention them with consideration these twenty years, at least. You do not know what I suffer. But I hope you will get over it and live to see many more young men of 4,000 a year come into the neighbourhood. Well, it will not matter if 20 such come, since you will not visit them. Depend upon it, my dear, that when there are 20, I will visit them all. Mr Bennet was such an odd mixture of quick parts, sarcastic humour, reserve and caprice, that the experience of three and 20 years had been insufficient to make his wife understand his character. Her mind was less difficult to develop... She was a woman of mean understanding, little information, and uncertain temper. When she was discontented, she fancied herself nervous. The business of her life was to get her daughters married. Its solace was visiting and news. 